all my pots here. I think I have them all together. I went around and had a comprehensive look at my setup and thought, you know, let's just have a look-see if I can compile a video to show all the pots, containers and things I use for my collection and why I use them. First of all, thank you very much for clicking on this video. If you hear any rustling in the background, my puppy King has a favorite pot of his own that is lodged in the corner, which he could easily get out, but decides just to mess about with it in the corner, growling and barking at it at random. But back to this subject, I wanted to show you if you see my pots on any kind of video or in the tours of my grow spaces, I want to show you and explain to you why I use them and what purpose they serve, because some are specific for a reason. So let's start with this fantastic example of a pot. Because net pots are not easy to come by, I always have to ship them in. But we do like our little mozzarella balls in our salads. And this is what the mozzarella balls come in, in the whey liquid. And then you lift the pot out of the main container and drain the whey liquid. Then you have little mozzarella balls in a little net pot. Perfect for me. And this is how I use it, like so. My little Velatulum piece. Hopefully it will survive. It's starting on a new leaf. <laughs> Good on it, little fighter. But yeah for seedlings or something that needs an airy mix, but I want to control the watering because in here I still have sphagnum moss, I use this little pot instead of buying the net pots in. Granted, I have some net pots that came with other orchids, but for these kind of projects, I save those more sturdier net pots and I use these little ones here. I also used this pot here, if I can call it as such, for the inside of Neophoenicia set up in the classic way, where the orchid is on top, drilling little holes, securing the orchid to help me out, and then I, you know, wrap the sphagnum moss around, keeping it very aerated. And it was perfect for that because literally I had a great lunch and it cost me nothing to recycle this. It even has drainage holes. This is perfect. So I have several of these in case I need them. Next up, along a similar line, are these plastic pots of just, you know, plastic cups that you get what we have, like a Chinese shop where all you can get all kinds of cheap goods, dollar store probably in the US. And these I use for all my seedlings. And I actually go about manipulating the height of the reservoir holes as needed, depending on what I am actually putting into these little pots. This is what it looks like in use. And the only downside is it's clear and I get a lot of algae, but I need it to be clear to see if there's any progress of root production, especially when it comes to seedlings. This is all ceramics in here. And this is one, not even a year old in this pot. So this one will need some watering soon. This is my Cattleya leopoldii, which I'm not going to get the label out, but it's a cross because finally I'm getting some roots. But that's another video. So this is how I use the little cups and I recycle the ceramics and I recycle these little cups. And before I went mad and went to the fancy pots, I had these kind of pots here that came from the powder for whitening your laundry. That's what this is from. And I make sure that I keep all the white pots in the past that I could find any container as long as it was white. And then I cut the top off and put some holes in and made myself a semi-hydro pot, which works perfectly because also here I can manipulate what I want to do in the pot regarding the moisture and the depth of the reservoir, how many holes, where I put the holes, and it doesn't cost me anything to recycle these because I always buy that whitening product for my laundry. And here is how I use it. 
This is a Dendrobium aurantiflammeum. Doing really well. And it can stay in there for a long, long time based on how little space the growths take up in the pot. My next kind of pot is this one. A little bit more decorative and pretty and is actually a pot which I manipulate by putting semi-hydro holes in. And I use this mainly for the Rapiculus Lelias or small Lelias that I'm not sure exactly how they will do in my climate. This one is a Cattleya araguaensis. And I want to make sure that the culture I have it in, lava rock and semi-hydro, for me is a safe bet all the time, every time. Just to make sure it gets established and I have it in a small pot, not a big creeping rhizome, lava rock. And we have a new growth right here, which has taken over 12 months to develop. But I like these little pots, also for the Rapiculus lelias, because I don't have to disturb the orchid that's in there. Slow growing, not a creeping rhizome, perfect for this little pot. But I started out with these pots before I went to the one that you saw that looked like a barrel. And I only got 10 of these, which is a shame. I would have loved to have had more. I love these little pots. This is an eight centimeter pot. And in here I have an Oncidium varicosum, bald in, I hope. I don't know, it's never bloomed for me. But it's doing quite well in this little pot and I'm keeping it in here, not disturbing it until I see something that happens regarding a bloom spike. If this is a varicosum, then I have a long way to go. Whatever it is, we'll find out eventually, I hope. But I like these little pots. I also have my Rapiculus lelias in these pots. Slow growing, short rhizome. Don't have to disturb the orchid for any length of time. Then I have these net baskets in which I have my telumnias. It was a last ditch effort to save the telumnias that I was trying in semi-hydro. With large lava rock, I used these baskets. They weren't expensive at all. I got them from the same Chinese shop, dollar store kind of shop. And all of my telumnias are in here. And the reason this one's empty is because I lost some. So I have two empty baskets, I think. Yeah, very cool. Love these little guys. Unfortunately, the whole setup is they hang on the west side of my blooming alley and are beautifully displayed against that wall. However, when it comes to that they are blooming, they're on a flipping tray because of the season. So they grow in the summer when they're beautifully displayed, but bloom when they're on a tray. <laughs> Oh well, can't win, but still, I love these little net baskets. Then I have these kinds of pots. I am not affiliated, if you recognize the logo, has nothing to do with it, except they're white. And I use the lid as a saucer for all my little pots that need them. like that. And then for the smaller version of this one here with my washing whitening product, I take the lid off. This is a little bit smaller, but I cut right up against the rim here and manipulate holes in order to make myself another semi-hydro pot if I need to have a little bit of a smaller size to the one previously like that. But I like the fact that it's white. So quite a lot of those have been saved in the past and I have hundreds of these lids just in case, you know. <laughs> then we come to the big square pots, which I also enjoy very, very much for the bigger Rapiculus lelias as they grow. My Lelia flava is in one of these and my Entfeldsii, much bigger, more substantial root system. And 
Then I use a big pot like this for those orchids. My all-time favorite, not affiliated, I talk about them a lot. No association, no promotion officially, I'm just a fan of these. This is an orchid top. This is the large version, and this is how I use it. This is an Angraecum didieri. This is the small size. I love them for the Angraecums. No root disturbance for a considerable amount of time. Even if the orchid triples or quadruples in size, this pot allows me to have the humidity in the tray, the air around the roots they like, and should I ever need to repot, the repotting is so simple because all these are pretty flexible and I don't have to mess around with the roots too much. I have all my Angraecums in orchid top pots. For my Neos, I have long cups. I would love to have them in a different cup, something that's a little bit more pliable, more conducive to squeezing, but they produce long roots. And I did bring out the silly little example of my Falcata Kibana because I wanted to show the long roots. The idea is that instead of having the traditional setup of a Neo, I can do the same in a semi-hydro setup with Leka and then accommodate their long root growth as opposed to stuffing them into a small pot. So I have this reservoir manipulated relatively high because of the narrowing at the base for my Neos. And I'm hoping that it goes well. Some are doing well. I'm not impressed with this one, but I'm holding on. And then what you see is a classic, my preferred pots. I have hundreds of them based on the size of the orchid. This is not a set that is sold together. So I brought out the large one, which is 18 centimeters, and I'm gonna show the sticker. My pots, these pots, the name of the brand is always in the description, always. What I get confused with is the cost of them when I've been asked on videos. So this, as you can see, is a 20 centimeter sized inner pot in my case, and it costs one euro 10. The mask is a random lucky find that it fits so beautifully together. And the texture outside, it's matte, gorgeous. Ah, oh, it feels wonderful in my hands. And this is also always in my description. 350 for this outer Porto Blanco mask. And the brand is Artevasi. So I wanted that on record. You see the price there. That is a 20 centimeter inner pot, but it fits perfectly into an 18 centimeter mask of this brand, as you can see, snug. So the same here, the inner pot is 16 centimeters, same brand. And this one costs 75 cents. The outer mask is 18 centimeters. I don't have the sticker, but it's 18 centimeter. And this one costs three euros 25. Here I have the smallest version that I can find in this combination. It's a 15 centimeter inner pot and it costs 50 cents. The outer mask is a 14 centimeter pot. And this one is at three euros 10. So I'm listing these prices because I have had questions in the past. It is also for me a record so I can refer back to this video because you won't believe it. I have so many clearly of these pots and I can't keep the prices 
memorized in my head. So if anybody were to ask in future what pots you use, I can myself also refer back to this timestamp. So yeah, now I used to start in deli containers, all kinds and all varieties. So first I stumbled upon these outer pots. And when I saw them and I felt them in my hands, I thought, wow, it took me one pot, walked around my entire garden center and saw these white ones on another shelf in a completely different location. And I put one in the other and the rest is history. I made a mass order for my garden center. They thought I was nuts. And then I showed them a picture of just the one shelf. <laughs> and then they really knew I was nuts. But in case anybody is interested, I don't have a link and I am not affiliated with any of these pots. I am just giving a tour of what I use, why I use it, and how I try to make my media, my setup work for the orchids that I put in. I do not have a direct link for my classic setup. They don't sell to individual people. They don't have a website where you can order 10, five or two. The inner pots come in much bigger sizes, but it's the outer pots for this combination that stop at 20, which is a shame. But I do have another option, which I will show you now. It's this combo right here. I already have my Cattleya Maxima in here. I'm not gonna bring her out, simply because of the space and the angle of the sun right now. I'm watching my other orchids here very closely. But all this is, is a lucky, lucky find of these square pots that I use for my Rapiculus Lelias. But I have found a square inner pot and it fits perfectly. I am so happy because I will have to up-pot my Guatemalensis soon, soon, two or three months. We'll, we'll wait and see what happens. And this is perfect. It has a creeping rhizome. It's, it's, it's too big for the pot I set it up in and I need to up-pot. So this is going to come perfectly and handy for me. And they have other sizes that go even bigger than this. And I am so very, very happy about that. One more little thing, just to end on a humorous note, but it works. Jomelia arborescens and my Zelemnia midas. Two random little pots. They are pots now. This is a regular soap dish that you would have in your bathroom with the suckers against the tiles or whatever. There you can see the holes for the suckers. And have your soap or sponge or whatever in it. But just look at this thing. It is perfect for an agricoid. I love it. And the reason I don't have a medium-sized pot for this agricoid and it's not in my orchid top like on that one, is because I didn't want to pay for shipment of another medium or large size orchid top until I didn't know how this orchid would do for me. And clearly it's doing really, really well. But soap dish, lots of holes full of lava rock at two euros. I love it. And I'm not buying an orchid top specifically for this orchid until it needs to be repotted, which will be a long time. Still a long ways to go. And these little baskets, I bought them at my Chinese, AKA dollar store for about 50 cents. And they work really well. I have some Neo Stylus in a basket like this. Lots of aeration. I don't know what you would use this for, but clothes, pegs, I don't know, too small for that, but I thought they were perfect. So my main purchases and my main expense came from my classic setup and they were so worth it. And I don't regret having done it at a time where I could afford to do so. Now, things are completely different. 
but they're super quality. They last a very long time. And I'm happy I made that investment at the time that I did. So this was a little tour of all my little gizmos and how I use them, where I acquired them from. <laughs> and I hope that it was of interest to you and not too long, too long winded. But when you look around a certain collection, you go, I wonder why they use it like that. And I wonder why they use it like that. Well, here we are. I just gave a little brief rundown regarding my little pots and setups. And I will do a breakdown and a deep dive into each and every one of them in separate videos, much, much shorter, but this is a general overview. Thank you. If you joined me and stayed all the way to the end, thank you so very, very much. I really appreciate it. Please stay safe and have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.